Okay, so... Uh, we've been talking about chords that go together in a key, right? Uh, the way that you start to... Uh, you should start to build a, uh, you know, you, where uh, an entire scale where you're seeing numbers on the bottom few strings and then you see uh, what chords you can put to those, right? So let's say we're in the key of C, right? So one, one, four, four, right? But you see a uh, one, four, three, two, three, whatever shape you want, seven, six, six, whatever, uh, five, five, right? So you're seeing the scale, the scale notes as numbers down here, and then you know which cage shape to go to. Now, you can, you don't have to play a straight up cage shape. Let's say, let's say I've got, there's my one, right? Because I know this is one, and I know I got the right cage shape, right? Um, and I, like we talked about in the last video, two videos ago, I don't know, I took like a week off or something, so I'm, I'm a little lost right now. Um, but we talked about how you can, uh, how you should know what each chord in a key takes, right? So one and four are major seven, five is dominant seven, two, three, and six are minor seven, seven is a half diminished seven, right? And then you learn what extensions they all take. And remember for that, everything takes a regular two, a regular four, a regular six. Regular 9, 11, 13, right? Same thing. Um, except for the 3 chord takes a flat 2 and a flat 6. The 4 chord takes a sharp 4. The 6 chord takes a flat 6. Those, those are the ones you got to remember. Oh, I uh, the extensions on the 7 chord, uh, the the minor 7 flat 5, the half diminish. Um, I mean, you can learn those if you want. I didn't include them in that list. Yeah. It's very rare that someone will say that a chart will ask you for half diminished nine or something like that. I mean, I can't recall ever seeing it. So people tend to not ask for extensions on on half diminished chords. So, um, uh, what I was going to say is. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so one of the ways that you can decide what else to give a chord, so like here's my four. I know I can give it, this is a three, I can give it this two. I can give it this sharp four. Right, so you can do the math per chord. Another way, and I think you should do both of these, right? You should be able to, to, process your other note options for any given chord based on you knowing that this is the five chord therefore it would take a flat seven it could take a regular six it could take a regular four so regular six for a flat seven a second put the six there right you should know you should know that stuff uh you should be able to do those calculations based on knowing that you're on a five chord therefore it takes a one a uh, uh, root five a root three five flat seven plus a regular two regular four regular six right um you should be able to do the math based on that but there's an alternate way of doing the math which you should also be able to do i wouldn't pick one or the other i think you should be able to to do both but it's this here's here's my scale here's my six seven two, one two three four five or however you want to do that right or I can move around, right? But but the idea is I should be able to hit play all the chords without moving vertically. I've mentioned that before because I'm thinking K shapes. But also, since I see these now at, in the context of this entire scale shape, what I can really do is here's my four, right? Right, six, seven, one, two, three, four, right? I can, each one of these notes is replaceable with any other note in the scale. Because remember, if we say a chord can take its root three, five, seven, and it's two, four, and it's six, well, guess what? That's seven notes. That's the entire scale. It can a chord can be the entire scale. Your four chord can be the entire scale. Now, in actual practice, you don't want to play the entire scale for that chord, but it could be any old cluster of notes you want. So let's say let's let's get me a bass note here. All right. So there's my there's my my four chord. Check this out. Regular four, right? But the scale looks like this. Let's say I make it major seven. 
But let's say I take this note to this because it's in the scale. Still sounds like a four chord, doesn't it? What about this one? What about this? What about this? What about this? Notes in the scale are the chord, right? There's my four chord. Or this. Right? Now what I'm let's say that we got a five chord. So Alright, so my five chord. Same notes. All the shapes I just played. They all sound like a five chord. But very, very colorful. Now in reality if I wanted to, you know, like uh, uh, see base most of the shape and only change one or note, one or two notes. Uh, and why am I thinking that? Well, I'm thinking this, but I've taken this down to a different note in the scale without necessarily thinking about what note it is. Now I do know it's a, it's a two, and that this would be a flat seven, right? But but I don't have to, or I don't have to come to this shape through thinking of what notes what note numbers they are relative to the five chord um i can just see scale notes and just grab a cluster right so let's say we got a six chord right same thing these all sound like a six chord right It all sounds like a six chord, right? So what I'm recommending is six, and you got your basic cage shape, whatever you're thinking. Just try grabbing other notes in the scale. Uh, so, um, and, and in addition to that, you can also start moving them around. So like, uh, let's say back to my four chord. Right, so. Right, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm seeing the scale, right? So. It all sounds like a four chord, right? So take one of your parent shapes and just replace one or two of the notes with different notes in the scale on that string, right? Um, so you got your basic four and you decide to give it that or this, right? Or this, right? Look, at, that's a four chord, right? So, and then learn to start moving it around. Now, at first your brain will your eyes will see something that you want to do and your hands will be very uncooperative and that's perfectly normal mine were as well i you know if i'm doing right that that once upon a time was a was something i decided i'm going to do this thing and and your fingers have to make very spontaneous decisions about you know and sometimes they have to swap assignments and stuff that stuff will not come easily at first, but over time, it, it absolutely will. So, so look at all my four chords that I'm gonna do by, I know this note is four, I'm doing this, but I know the scale looks like this. So let's do instead of this, or even instead of major seven, let's do, or this. Right, or, it's my four chord. These are all four chords. Right here, then this scale shape. What? What? I'm an idiot. Now the shape for the four chord would be like a G shape, the parent shape. But I can I can take this shape and just so all four chords. Just take clusters of notes, even though I'm. Primarily thinking this, I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna treat the the notes in it as very each being very fungible, right? Here's this shape. Here's this the shape, 
every one of these notes is fair game. So let's say, uh, let's see, and reach across scale shape. Now, when you're playing by yourself without the going, right? You're, then you got to do all the duties, right? So, which means that's going to cost you a finger, right? So, right? Notice immediately something goes to the root just to maintain fourness. Right? So five. Ever heard that five chord? Uh, five. I don't know if I have. So the scale here. Right? So I'm basically thinking this, but I, I'll diverge uh, uh, from it very quickly. Now, in this right here, that explains probably 80% of what I do with chords right there, right? So if you're looking through some video and you're like, oh, wow, you know a lot of voicings. It's not really that I know a lot of voicings. I'm not, I'm not thinking of sta uh, block voicings. I'm thinking of, of main block voicings. You know, I'm, I know some block voicings and I might use them as jumping off points. But most of what you're seeing is me seeing both the starting from a block voicing and then finagling it using other scale notes. So this or as a four. Ever see that as a four chord? Well, no. I mean, I haven't. But what I'm doing is I'm thinking this and I see this but also up into this. I see all the other scale notes and, and I'm just grabbing stuff. And now all of a sudden I want to do, and sometimes you'll, you'll want to do something that's virtually impossible, but, and that's fine. That's good. You should be doing that. Mm, there's my four. And of course, by the way, this is like, we've, we've seen this sort of implicitly in this. Mm, it's also a five. It's also a six. It's also a one. a low C, a two. Doesn't that sound like a two chord, right? So, the path to knowing a bazillion chord voicings uh, is to combine your, your knowledge of these block shapes with the seeing the scale there and knowing that any of the notes in the scale is totally fair game for that chord. Make sense? Including... Uh, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, we'll do this because I, I always tend to use this, but, uh, so four, uh, 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 six, uh, 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 five, uh, 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 two, uh, 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 one. All right. I, I did another video where I use this as an example. And, but also the, yeah, all these previous videos, I keep resorting to this. Let's say. sound like the chords. Five, two, one, four, or right? Or let's say I've got, say I got this one. Right. Let's say on one of them, like I just want to move the, the note that is a little more colorful than I want in that moment. Just go up to the next scale note or down to the next scale note, right? This is magic. Let me ask you this. How many cool ideas does this approach hold? How many possible song ideas does this approach hold? This is, so 
my friend Noel and I have been talking about uh, sort of music theory paradigms, right? The, when you pick a way of cataloging something you heard in a song, like some chord progression that you heard in a song, what's important is coming up, because, you, I mean, we could all come up, we could come up with a music theory uh, model that t accounts for every possible thing that ever happens in songs. Like, right, you could do that with the with the chromatic scale. You could just say, everything's the chromatic scale, and whatever sounds good is good, right? And that's, turns out that can, uh, that can account for everything Bach ever did, for everything whoever ever did, right? The problem is, it mainly suggests to your brain really stupid sounding ideas, right? It's it, Most of the stuff you're going to come up with, with that, as your paradigm is going to suck, right? What's important when you're thinking of a of when you're picking a paradigm through which to think of music, right? Um, is the fertility of that of that idea, right? The fertility of that music theory model. My dog needs a shush. Um, uh, and fertility toward coming up with killer sounding stuff, right? This approach is the most fertile ground I've ever found in music. I, the s song ideas, improvisation ideas, I don't know why I pronounced it that way, um, just comping ideas, obviously, you know, when I'm playing over somebody else's song, it's like, you know, you can, you can make things as colorful as you want. Obviously, I can just resort to regular triad shapes, you know, the regular cage shapes. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's that. This is as fertile of ground as you're ever going to find, I think. Certainly, I, for me, that's what I found it to be. Where now, a decade or so into thinking like this, it's probably more, more than that by now. Um, it's like, not only do my hands just do this stuff effortlessly, uh, what, what was once a very complex juggling act. And again, don't be discouraged if that's what it feels like, if your hands are uncooperative at first. That's fine. That's probably where you're supposed to be at first. Your hands are going to learn to be more agile because of this. Um, and again, I was there. I sucked at the my hands doing the things I wanted them to do, and they adapted. They adapted because I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, you know, change what I wanted them to do based on whether I thought they could do it. Right. It was. It was. No. I got to figure out a way to do it. Okay, there it is. And then, you know, like with a lot of things in guitar fingering, right? The more of them you've worked on, the more things are just automatic, right? Um, so uh, uh, this now, though, 10 years or so in, it's like, it's not only that my fingers are extremely cooperative on this stuff. It's that, it's that, I constantly come up with new stuff because of this. And this is what I'm this is what I'm thinking when I'm constantly coming up with new stuff and new ways of playing old stuff and uh chord melody stuff and writing ideas. I mean it's it's nonstop because of this every day I can sit down at the guitar and play something brand new and something that sounds fresh to me or play the same old song in in a brand new sounding way. So I 5 out of 5 stars. I highly recommend this this approach. Um, very, very well worth worth spending a significant amount of time, you know. Um, so you're, again, to summarize, you're combining uh, what we've been working on, right? The scales, the scale, the chords in a key uh, by uh, adjoining them to all the scale notes, right? And seeing those scale notes as alternate notes for any given chord shape. Makes sense, all right. Okay. Let me know your questions. Like and subscribe. Uh, tell me your favorite Pokemon. All right, bye.